Hey, welcome back, Strike Eagle fans. Not so here for another long-awaited tutorial. Apologize for the long uh, delay in between. I had a bit of a self-induced computer uh, dumbass moment. Uh, so all's fixed, all's uh, back on track, and uh, I wanted to jump right back in with another tutorial. Today we're going to primarily talk about the nav FLIR uh, and how to set it up on the ground and how to uh, use it in flight and what it looks like under various different conditions. Uh, also, as a bonus, I'm going to show you some uh, air-to-ground mapping with um, our Radar Genius's uh, amazing patch map uh, radar work. Uh, and then we're going to take that to a conclusion with a, a LGB loft to a, a 2GB-12s on an aircraft shelter on Creech Air Force Base. Uh, the primary focus is on the nav FLIR. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about that. And then I'm going to go into a lot more detail later on in a, in a standalone tutorial on the radar and on the bombing stuff, but I just threw that in just so you can kind of put it all together with the nav FLIR and how all, all of that looks. But again, that is not the focus of it. All right, so let's jump right into the, um, the nav FLIR. So sitting on the ground, you can see right now, obviously no nav FLIR up on the HUD, so there's a couple things that we need to do to set it up. Uh, if I go down into the um, uh, heads down display, let me flick that switch back to uh, standby so I can show you this. So in the UFC right now, you can see the nav FLIR is in standby. So we're going to go down into the uh, lower console panel, and we just make sure that that is turned on. So forward is on, and, uh, and then we'll jump back into the UFC. So now you can see it says NavFlare Norm or Normal, and then we can go in, into that UFC submenu by pushing the button next to it. And now we can see the, uh, the, the NavFlare submenu. So right here you can see the status of it. I'm in Norm. Uh, I can change from white hot to black hot. I can do that uh, hideous look and turn stuff that we'll talk about uh, later. Uh, but I just want to hit the, the basics of this. So uh, again, notice the, the nav flare itself is not on. So the only way that that is going to work is down here on your UFC panel is you're going to uh, turn the brightness and contrast knobs up uh, to at least get them out of off so you can start seeing some uh, objects. So we'll go ahead and turn that button up a little bit. Notice it doesn't turn on with just one. You have to have uh, both of them uh, out of off for the nav flare picture to show up. And then you can adjust the quality of the nav flare just to suit your needs if you want it really bright or really dim, totally up to you. Uh, and then there's another right down next to the uh, on switch. There's a level gain uh, knobs down here that you can also adjust the, uh, the, the infrared uh, level and gain. So I'll show you a little bit. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll change some of these buttons here just so you can see. Unfortunately, I can't show you it changing in real time just because of the way my uh, screen is set up, but we'll jump back. And you can see by uh, turning those knobs now, everything is really washed out. A lot of gain, a lot of level. So I'm going to turn those back down to the setting that I had them before that seemed like they worked pretty good. So let's put that knob back to 12 o'clock, and we'll turn this one back the other way. There you go. And you can see when we go back, it's a lot less uh, washed out. Send it here so I can adjust the picture with the, the brightness and contrast here. So as I turn the, uh, the contrast knob, and then I can turn the brightness knob up to get the whole picture more or less bright, just, again, totally to suit your needs. So the, this button, uh, if I turn one of them off, uh, notice the whole picture will completely go, go away. And then that way all I have to do is, the, as a pilot, just turn one button on to get the nav flare on or off. So it's a pretty easy way to set it up on the ground and then uh, pretty much forget it from that point on. This is another important thing for the WIZO. So let me show you, uh, we can pull up the, uh, the HUD. And if I go to, if I select nav flare, now notice I can get a repeater up in the HUD. And if we jump into the back seat, I can do the same. So notice I've got the HUD repeater up here on the, uh, on the back uh, WIZO seat. The reason why this is important is because um, uh, oftentimes the pilot uh, will turn the, the FLIR off in the front so he just sees through the HUD, especially if he's using night vision goggles or if we're not down low. And then that way the, the WIZO can still see the nav uh, FLIR in his HUD repeater back here. Oftentimes we use that even during the daytime if it was kind of shitty weather or low visibility or whatever or uh, just low light conditions. Um, let's jump back into the front. So if I wanted to turn uh, the... Um, uh, the nav flare off. Uh, I can turn that all the way down to my HUD here. But notice, as long as that button is still out of on, uh, I still get the nav flare. So that way, I, um, the WIZO can still see it. 
One thing I want to show you in the uh, in the nav FLIR, uh, remember that the FLIR image comes from the navigation, the lander navigation pod, and that is located on the right-hand side of the jet under the right intake. So it's about 15 feet low uh, and about five to six feet right of the nose. So you can see, let me turn the uh, FLIR picture on up here. So you can see that the picture, even in the HUD, is a little bit offset to the right. Uh, and you can even see the little outline of the, the nose. So as the, as the pod sits under the jet, I can physically see the nose right here because I'm, I'm under the jet looking straight forward so I can kind of see the outline. Uh, so you'll see as we start taking off down the runway that these uh, actual lights are the real thing. And then the nav flare image is going to be slightly offset uh, of those lights. Um, so that's, again, how you set it up. And here's what that's what the nav flare picture looks like. I'm going to leave the HUD repeater up as we uh, take off. So we're on the ground at, at McCarran uh, International Airfield in, in Vegas. I'm going to take you on a little tour down the strip so you can see what the actual real uh, lights look like through the HUD image, even with the nav flare projected in the HUD. And then you'll see the contrast between that and the nav flare and the HUD repeater because the nav flare HUD repeater isn't going to see any of those actual real lights, unlike the HUD, because, again, you're seeing through that HUD. So the other thing to remember about the nav flare image is it's, uh, it's basically projected as a rectangle up in the HUD, and it's collimated just like the other nav flare, uh, I'm sorry, just like the other HUD imagery. So if I had track IR on or if I was in VR and I was able to move my head around, unfortunately I can't do it on the flat screen. But if I looked around, I could actually look around the HUD, and that um, nav flare image would kind of move off to the side. It would, it would move around in, in the HUD uh, just like the symbology would. So you could actually look around the nav flare image, uh, and it does have the parallax just like the, um, uh, just like the HUD does. All right, so let's get the show on the road. We'll uh, go ahead and get airborne, and I'll show you once we get airborne. Uh, as we go down the, uh, the strip, you can see what the lights look like through the actual HUD, and then you can see what the um, HUD repeater looks like in contrast to that. Uh, I've already got the target pot on. Uh, I'm doing a big no-no. I would never take off with that in, uh, in standby, or I'm sorry, with that in on. It would always be in standby, but I'm going to be a bad guy and, uh, and leave it where it is so I don't have to jump into it later. So I'm going to go ahead over to the air to air radar and let's get rolling. So again, I've got four GB-12s on the airplane, not, huge, not hugely heavy, no tanks. So we're going to rotate it about 125 or so, should get us off the ground nicely. And then we'll get gear and flaps up in the well. A little bit late to rotate, but that's all right. Gear's coming up. Flaps coming up. I'll come out of burner so I don't overspeed the gear. Waiting for the light to go out and then back into burner. And I'll zoom in a little bit just so you get a little bit better view of the of the HUD. And we'll turn right to head down the strip. So you can see in the uh, in the normal HUD, even with the nav flare image up, I'm still getting the bleed through of the actual lights. Uh, outside if I were flying over a city. Whereas in the nav FLIR uh, HUD down here, notice I'm not getting any of those lights uh, bleeding through because I'm just getting a pure IR uh, uh, imagery. So that's a little bit of a difference that the pilots uh, will get used to is you do get kind of a, a weird blend of, uh, of lights and, and nav FLIR imagery. If I turn the, uh, the, the gain and level up and, and probably the brightness up a little bit, it would wash more of those lights out uh, as I go. So I can, I can get it really bright, but you're still going to get a little bit of a bleed through uh, as we go. Okay, so uh, heading up north, we're going to go uh, over this uh, ridge line or just short of this ridge line here, and then start going up to the northeast up to the target area. Uh, I've do one last quick clearing on the uh, air to air radar. I've got no air threats out there, so I'm not really worried about the air to air. But we'll get the coverage set up like a good wizard would before I uh, leave that. So coverage is set, and we're going to primarily now go into the air-to-ground radar and talk about a few things here. I'll fly along at about 2,000 feet initially. Uh, this is the uh, RBM mode of the radar, the real beam map mode. Uh, and we don't use this very often. This is just a, a, a means to an end to get us uh, to, um, uh, to the uh, high-resolution mapping. I'm going to put on active pause here for just a second so you can kind of see what's going on. So uh, in the RBM mode, essentially, it's just painting the ground. This big shadow right here is this big mountain uh, just directly ahead of us, only a few miles away. Uh, the, uh, the radar rings here are, um, uh, since we're on a 20-mile scale, this is 5 miles. 
10 miles, 15 miles, then 20 miles is the, is the far one. If I were to zoom out or zoom out here, then obviously those range readings would change. This is 10, 20, 30, and 40 on the uh, radar uh, scale. So the big thing I want to point out here is notice that that mountain is casting a shadow. Again, I'm not using the RBM map for anything other than just getting into the RBM or getting into the high resolution mapping mode. But I wanted you to see that uh, the, the shadow is really important because if my uh, target, and you'll see the symbology on the, the map, if that symbology was in a shadow, that's, a, that's an immediate cue that I need to climb to start unmasking because whatever's causing that shadow, I'm below that, uh, that terrain feature and I'm not able to actually see the, uh, the radar uh, image beyond that. So I, I now have to get uh, higher to be able to look over whatever that image is. All right, so go ahead and uh, turn, uh, get going, and we'll start heading up to the, uh, to the north. All right, so we've auto-sequenced. And we'll start leaving the lights of Las Vegas and get into a lot more pitch black uh, kind of stuff. I'm going to turn the, the brightness down here a little bit just so I can kind of pick out some, uh, some terrain features. I tend to like it relatively dim. And, and again, I could go in and, and play with the, um, the gain and level and get a little bit better uh, IR picture. But I think that's pretty good. And that kind of shows us what's going on. So let me, uh, let me zoom out here on the radar. So now, let me, uh, let me pause one more time, show you a couple features of the radar. So the cool thing is uh, I can, I see the symbology of my target on the radar. This is the IP, so there's my square like we talked about in previous tutorials. And then here is my uh, target. It's always denoted by a triangle. Uh, and right now, that's just kind of on the verge of being in a, in a shadow. So in this case, I'd probably want to climb a little bit to unmask and, uh, and look over where this bright terrain is here uh, to be able to see that. So right now you can see uh, the um, cursor is uh, in map cursor function. And right up here at, the, at PB17 is, is SP, which means I've got nothing uh, selected. So in the, um, uh, on the front cockpit HOTAS, I can now HOTAS the cursor, which is, is basically latched to the center. Uh, and I can step it through all the different points by lifting up on the coolie switch on the front cockpit throttle. So I'm just going to step and step, and it automatically goes over the target. And notice now, PB17 has now shown me three point, which is the, is the target designation. Also, HOTAS-wise, I can change the size of the display window in the uh, 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 HRM, so I can have this already set up. And I do that with the auto act switch aft to make it bigger. I can make a really big map out to 10 miles, or I can zoom in by going auto act forward. Uh, typically, we start in 3.3 miles unless our system is way off. There's no real reason to uh, uh, start any bigger than that. Uh, otherwise, you're just wasting time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start uh, taking, uh, now that I've got it set up, I'm going to take us off freeze, and I'm going to start taking some maps of the, uh, of the target. So go ahead and go TDC in, and now notice it's counting down right here, and it now should show us some returns. I'm going to go ahead and freeze it, and then you can see that I'm starting to get some uh, terrain features. I'm going to brighten that up just a little bit. You can see now there's the, there's the airfield, and you can see, let me put it on pause one more time. Now you can see some uh, terrain shadowing. Uh, it looks like we're okay, but there's some shadowing that's blocking some of the target area itself here. So let me go ahead and climb a little bit more. So I'll freeze now, and now we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on uh, the map and take another one, see if we can get a little bit better, uh, better view of that. So see, it's counting down right now as I climb, getting a little bit better uh, Look at the target area. I'll freeze that. It should automatically be frozen. Let me turn some of the gain down. And what we're looking for on this airfield is we're looking for a backfire bomber that's sitting on either a runway or taxiway. Uh, so this looks like a, a pretty good little bright dot there sitting on a taxiway. I'll zoom in one more. So now we're down in the point six seven nautical mile map. I've got about 10 miles to the IP and uh, looking good. So I'll go ahead and take one last map here and see uh, what that looks like. Aha, looks like an uh, air, airplane on the uh, airfield. I'm going to put on pause one more time. Uh, so now, if I'm fairly confident that that is my uh, target that I'm looking for, uh, and I would know that by doing some good target study, 
I can now go into the into the targeting mode now that I'm happy with the map. What I'll do, what I'll do is I'm going to pull up the targeting pod because it's really interesting to see. Whoops, one too many times. It's really interesting to see once uh, once I command target, uh, you can see the target pod is going to snap over to the airfield. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go down to the uh, uh, PB7 on the radar map. Uh, and because we were in map cursor function, we were taking these high resolution maps. Now I'm going to cycle that to go over to target. And if you notice, if I cycle through there, I've got cube, mark, back to map, update, and target. So target is what I want. And as long as I uh, quality control that I'm in uh, three point here for the, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better for the targeting. So I'm in uh, three point. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, I'm in three point for the for the map. I'm sorry, in two point, my apologies. And uh, that tells me that when I designate that as the target, notice this target triangle is now going to move over to, uh, to update there on the, uh, on the airplane. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll put the cursors over the aircraft. If I wanted to, I could, I could zoom in, but I'm happy enough with this. This is fine. So uh, working to put the cursors over the target. I'm in uh, target update mode, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So we'll go to uh, air to ground master mode now. So now you can see we're in, we're still uh, we're in air ground master mode. You can see that down here, uh, but it's still showing uh, we've got a uh, just a nav waypoint set. So what I want you to see is once I designate, you're going to see the all the all this update to a targeting function. You'll get the uh, uh, azimuth steering line, and you'll watch the target pod is going to snap over to the target, and now two point will actually be populated up here in the target pod PB17 as well. And I'm going to go ahead and go master arm since we're getting close to the target. And I can tell that because I've got the, uh, the gun cross up in the HUD. And I can tell that I've got the laser arm. I also say a laser arm here, but I've got a diamond around the gun cross as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to back to the radar, and I'll go TDC in to designate because I've got target cursor function. And bam, you can see now it's designated. You can see now the target pod is zoomed in uh, or zoomed over to the, uh, to the point. Uh, I've got two point in, and notice it's now... Tell me that the target or the target pod is queued up to the target, the newly designated target, and it, the designated designation source is from the radar. And now I can take control of the target pod if I want. I can zoom in and go. Yep, sure enough, there's a uh, backfire bomber sitting on the uh, the target uh, uh, ramp there, so I can see that there. I'm going to cheat and go ahead and and um, get into the target pod while I'm in in um, uh, freeze. So let's go ahead and take it off freeze. And we're flying. Let's go ahead and get back down to the low altitude environment, and I'll get ready for the, um, the loft. So the cool thing is now that I'm done with the air-to-ground targeting uh, mode with the radar, I can go back to air-to-air -air and start searching for threats. And I'll work the target pod in, um, uh, with my uh, right screen. And notice if I zoom off or I bump the TDC or go off, I can go uh, auto act aft and just uh, re go back, recenter back to the target. Let's go ahead and start going target direct. So I'm about uh, 14 miles away. Disregard the, uh, the time in the HUD. That's still a work in progress. We're still working on that to, uh, to get all that timing done. So let me not hit the ground here. Notice the uh, target pod is behind a hill. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that until we're uh, actually in the loft. Okay, I swapped my screens back over now to have something uh, what I would normally fly with, with the uh, target pod on the left, armament up on the right, and we're running into target now. Looking, again, like I talked about, looking to pull it about uh, five miles on the um, uh, distance to target. So coming up on seven miles now. Speed is good, master arm is hot, and laser is armed, uh, ready to go. Pot is or the pot is going to unmask once we're in the pool and pull in now. Okay, now you can see the uh, air, airplanes in view and weapon away and coming back down for the TF loft recovery. Obviously, we don't have TF going, but looking pretty good. Trying to get the crosshairs on the target. All right, lasers coming on now. See if I can do a little bit better job of lasing here as I try to fly. Oh, 
boom, laser is off. And now we're going to go back to air to air radar, get that cooking for us as we uh, egress off to the target and going into uh, air to air master mode. Looks like good weapons effects and we'll start headed back towards, uh, towards home as we uh, egress out low level. Lots of stuff going on. A uh, big workload for the uh, pilot flying single ship uh, or single seat, sorry, uh, trying to do this night uh, loft. Obviously, if you've got a Wizzo in the back seat, it's uh, way, way better uh, for that to happen. So anyway, this was uh, just a, a quick and dirty uh, look at the, uh, the nav flare. Again, I just wanted to show you what this looks like. You can see outside, obviously it's pitch black outside. We've got the nav flare and, uh, and everything is looking really good. Um, again, you could fly uh, non-TF with the nav flare. We wouldn't ever be allowed to do it in real life, uh, but you could do it just with the visual terrain. Uh, but I would never want to risk my life that, uh, that there's something that it's not seeing uh, that uh, that the TFR, that you wouldn't be able to tell in the, in the nav flare that the TFR is going to pick up. All right, guys, hopefully that made sense. Again, I'm going to get into a lot more detail on the, on the radar and the uh, target pod, uh, especially with kind of weapons deliveries, but that was just a, a quick teaser for what it looks like uh, using uh, all these different systems put together. Now you can see as we're getting uh, back in towards uh, Las Vegas, we're starting to pick up some of the cultural features uh, as we get a little bit closer. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it here, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and we'll talk soon. Take care. Not so's out.